All right, today we're going to focus on programming a uh, VX231 handheld radio with a uh, USB cable. So first we have to install the driver for the cable. So go ahead and insert the disk, and it's going to pop up with this message here. We're going to go ahead and double click right here in this folder. And then if, uh, in this case, we're using Windows 7, so we're going to have to find the driver for uh, Windows 7, which looks like it's right here. And we're going to go ahead and click on this application and just follow the prompts here while it installs. Go ahead and click Yes here. And just follow the prompts like any software that you would do. And just have to wait for the status bar here. And that just took a moment, and we click Finish. And now the drivers for the cable should be installed to the PC. And next we're going to uh, go ahead and uh, open up the uh, software. which is the CE99. This is for 231 radios. And uh, when you open this up, it's going to come with a uh, default spreadsheet here with just the, uh, the one frequency. And uh, now what we have to do is uh, go, going to go ahead and uh, plug in the uh, USB cable down into the most available USB drive there. And then we're going to go ahead and uh, go into our uh, device manager and see where the uh, USB cable has been assigned for. So, um, and we're going to go into uh, hardware here and then go to device manager. And it's going to pull up this screen here, and then you're going to need to locate the uh, USB that we connected here. Uh, so it should be listed here. And uh, actually, it's over under ports this time. Um, so always check ports or universal serial bus drivers. Uh, sometimes it will be down here, but in this case, we can see that it's assigned to COM port 4, and we know it's the same one because uh, it's titled Prolific USB to Serial COM port. So that was what it was listed on the uh, software when we installed it. So we know that's COM 4, so you can go ahead and close that out, close everything out. Now what we're going to do from within the software here is you're going to go up to uh, File, Configure, and now we can see that it's already set to COM4, so we're in business there, so it should be detecting that USB cable. And uh, now what we're going to do, um, we always start by reading the radio no matter what, so we know everything's good with the radio. So start with your radio powered off, and you're going to plug in the other end of the cable to the audio jack there. And then at the top of the screen here, we're going to go ahead and head and click the icon here with the red arrow with the uh, computer monitor there. If you highlight over it, it's going to say read, so we know that's a good one. So we go ahead and click read. And then just follow the instructions, so switch radio on and off. And you should see a status bar going, and we know it's good. And as you can see, every radio just comes with that one frequency in there. So now we have that pulled up here. And from here, we can begin editing the frequency spreadsheet. So as you can see, it comes default with one channel. In order to activate the other channels, you need to double click here on the side. And depending on how many channels you want, you can just go down. So we want to do full 16, full 16 channels in most circumstances. So we're just going to go down here and double click. And within here, this activates everything. And then what we can do here is an example. Let's say we want to do 465.55. If you hit the tab button on your keyboard, it's going to auto populate that over to the transmit side. Now we got to focus on our uh, PL tones over here, which uh, Vertex calls sub audio tones. So, what you're going to want to do is click in the first column here, 
where there's the lines, and you're going to hit the space bar once. That'll get you what's called the, uh, a TPL in uh, a lot of circumstances. If you double click in there, it's going to pull up a chart of all the possible TPLs that you can um, input in there. So you can double click on any one you want, and it'll go ahead and assign it on either spot. Now, if you want to change that to the other uh, DPL tone, hit the space bar again, and that'll open up this field here. Again, if you double click, it'll open up the complete table here where you can uh, double click in here and select any DPL you'd like. If you'd like to type it in yourself, you can also you can also do so by just simply typing the same thing that's shown there, a D, and then any number you want, and it'll allow you to do so as well. So that's the basics of this section here, so inputting your frequencies and your PL tones. Um, most of this other information is a little bit more advanced, so we'll get into that a little bit later. And then a few other functions that you're going to want to automatically deal with from off the bat is under power saving. If you click on this, it's going to open this option. And typically we like to change this to a one-to-one -one for receive save mode. Basically this makes it so the radio doesn't go into a sleep mode if it's sitting for a long time. And uh, it'll just uh, allow you to not miss uh, the beginning parts of transmissions when they're coming through. And also these low battery alerts, I typically turn these off for customers. Just can be a little annoying to have that tone go off. So we go ahead and apply every time we make any changes and then hit OK to make sure that's locked in there. And that's basically the initial part of programming here. So after we get all this inputted in the way we want it, what we're going to do is uh, we want to write all this information back into the radio now, once we have everything the way we want it. So you're going to go ahead and plug the cable back into your radio. If it's still plugged in, go ahead and hit the right button at the top here and follow the prompts once again, so hit yes and switch your radio on and off and you'll get the progress indicator. So all the information we've edited here has now been written back into the radio and you can go ahead and test that and it should be good to go. So that's the uh, first step of programming the VX231.